You've maxed out a class or two, purchased every weapon and attachment from the armory. Maybe you're still struggling with the harder difficulties, or you're just wondering what else is there to do before the September 8th update. Hey there friends, it's Livid here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming. And today we're here to show you seven additional weapons and a few perks in Aliens Fireteam Elite that you may not have obtained yet. First things first, if you weren't already aware, there are a ton of hidden rewards in the game locked behind harder difficulties and even just RNG by farming missions and hidden caches. Now today, we're here to talk about seven specific weapons, where to find them, if they're good, and how to deck them out for a proper build. So let's get into it. Now we're going to start with the Heirloom Standoff Shotgun, simply because it's the only paid DLC weapon in the game. If you didn't know, you can pick this up by purchasing the Endeavor Veteran Pack, but more importantly, we wanted to tell you if it's actually worth spending the money on. Short story, no. No single weapon is ever worth $10. For those of you that want to spend the money, however, here is our take on it. The Heirloom Standoff Shotgun pretty much performs exactly like the M37A3 pump shotgun that you start with. Now, while it does fire slightly faster, it can only ever have five shots max in the mag and overall deals less damage. It does, however, have the benefit of boasting a much higher stumble chance than any other shotgun especially if you level it up to four stars. So if that's what you're looking for in a close quarters weapon, this might be the one for you. Now with all that in mind, if you do end up getting this weapon and are looking for the ideal attachments to balance out the shortcomings, check out the Precision Break, Laird Breach, and Miller Twist Rifle. All right, now with that out of the way, we can get into the rest of the hidden weapons. And it's important to note here that these are all obtained by running missions on intense difficulty or above. They are completely random end of mission drops, not tied to any single specific mission. Now there seems to be a lot of confusion around this, so we wanted to make sure to set the record straight here. Let's start with the rifle category. First up, the AM16 Grupa. And honestly, this one looks really awesome. It's a really unique burst fire DMR that you'll either love or hate. It has a decent fire rate, solid damage for the type of weapon that it is, and has a great accuracy and baseline stability. Now the weak point damage is also on par with the M41A3 burst rifle, if that's your cup of tea. It does, however, have a pretty terrible magazine size for a burst firing weapon, and is kind of slow to reload. Now if you do end up liking this weapon and want to build it in a way that offsets its flaws, I suggest the vented flash hider, the drum magazine, and the green dot sight. As long as you fully empty the magazine each time, this should help with the long reload time, mag size, and bring your weak point damage in line with other rifles. The Kramer Assault Rifle is probably my favorite hidden weapon we're going to talk about in this video. And honestly, I think this thing is the best in slot for any rifle wielding class as of the publishing of this video. Now, why do I think that? Now, while the Kramer Assault Rifle boasts a much slower fire rate than other automatic rifles, it has an incredibly high base damage, as we've come to expect from the Kramer brand weapons. It has a beefy 40 round base magazine size, pretty great accuracy and stability, and because of the low fire rate, it makes landing each shot on your target incredibly easy. Couple this thing with a gunner's overclock, and it absolutely shreds. Now it does have a damage fall off that drops a bit earlier than other automatic rifles, but has a base weak point damage that is 10% higher than the other fully automatic weapons. Now if you end up maxing this weapon out at four stars, you'll also get even more weak point damage and the highest base stumble chance of any automatic rifle in the game. Now my suggested loadout for this weapon, if you end up taking a liking to it, is the precision brake, drum magazine, and the hybrid sight. This will bring your damage fall off up substantially, tighten your bullet spread, and bump up your ammo capacity and weak point damage for optimal DPS. Moving on to the close quarter weapons, the LEM MP11 Storm Surge is a unique burst fire SMG. Now if you aren't a fan of the automatic SMGs up until this point, or have issues controlling your ammo usage, I definitely suggest giving this one a shot. It also boasts a slightly higher base ammo count than the M39 SMG, but lower than the X43 Barrage Flechette SMG. It also has a slightly higher base stumble chance than the others. Now the weapon does have shortcomings with lower accuracy and stability than the other SMGs, which means getting this weapon up to four stars will help bridge the gap in those weak spots. Now the others can be shored up in your choice of attachments. I'd recommend the Precision Break, Tactical Mag, and Green Dot Sight to bring your weak point damage, effective range, and max ammo up to viable levels. Now when I said the Kramer Assault Rifle was my favorite weapon in this list, I wasn't lying. 
but the Type 76 Auto Shotgun is a damn close second. And we have another beautiful Wayland yutani styled weapon here. And once again, it's a unique shotgun compared to all the others as it's a fully automatic variant. That means popping overclock on a gunner here and holding down the trigger will pour an absolute massive amount of damage into your target. And because it's a magazine style weapon, this thing reloads much faster than something like the pump action weapons. Now don't get me wrong, I still think the M37 A3 pump shotgun is one of the absolute best weapons in the game. But this thing comes damn close, and is perfect for those looking for a playstyle more in line with this weapon. Maxing this weapon out at 4 stars will also make your reload time and fire rate even higher, which just helps with dishing out more damage. Now the drawback on the Type 76 is without a doubt its range, ammo reserves, and bullet spread. To help somewhat compensate for these things, I'd recommend the Precision Break, Casket Mag, and the Hybrid Sight. It still won't hit like the pump variants, but it's nothing to laugh at either. Moving over to the handgun slot, we have another Wayland yutani weapon in the form of the Type 78 Burst Pistol. And let me just say, I really like this weapon. If you like the Twin Hammer or the Type 95 Combat Pistol, I'd say this one is kind of a mixture of the two, but in most areas, better than the Type 95. Most of the stats are the same as the Type 95, while being on a burst firing weapon, but it does lack in weak point damage and stumble chance, unfortunately something you really can't substantially increase enough to be on par with the base stats of the Type 95 or the Twin Hammer, so it really does kind of sit in its own category. Obviously, we want to try and mitigate these flaws as best as possible, and do so via the vented flash hider, the tactical mag, and the green dot sight. Now you'll bump up your weak point damage, up the fall off of your damage, and sizably increase your max ammo. Definitely give this one a shot if you get your hands on it, because you just might like it. Alright, onto our final weapon, and I bet by now you're kind of wondering where is the demolisher love? Well, it's here. Kind of. In the form of an alternate rocket launcher. The M12 RPG launcher holds only a single round at a time, but boasts a comical reload speed. So aside from firing one shot at a time versus three, where does this weapon differ? Well, it's one round does almost twice the damage, which depending on your skill in navigating friendly fire, can be a huge issue. You also have 10 less rounds in reserve than the M12 A1 rocket launcher, which can also be a bit of an issue. Now the real difference is in the progression of this weapon. While the M12 A1 adds a chance for a secondary explosion to occur on kill, the M12 opts for amping your explosion radius and applying a 75 damage thermal dot on hit. Is that good? Well, it depends. Against tankier targets, you'll have a dot burning more often than a secondary explosion proc. And the base damage of this weapon definitely does more against elites and your teammates. Now, the dot effect can also apply, unfortunately, to your allies, which makes this weapon even riskier. Now, because of this, I personally don't recommend this weapon but others, they might really enjoy it and the effect it brings when maxed out. So if you do end up liking this weapon, I suggest Phosphorus Munitions, Miller Twist Rifling, and the Deep Railed Armature to significantly bump up your ammo reserves, add a slow overtime effect, and a chance to spawn a pool of fire to synergize with all of these effects and the baseline perks of this weapon. Now, this last section isn't about weapons, but it's something I think you all really need to know about. While there are some really unique and honestly fun weapons locked behind intense difficulties, there's also something else. Now, I saw a lot of people wondering where the heck I got the perk Creative Pain Point Solutions on my Technician. Now, as it turns out, there is a unique perk for each class that can drop from hidden caches randomly. Now, I never found any of these on casual or standard difficulties. All of these were found in caches on the Intense Plus missions. Now, that could be a coincidence, but just know they are there. Now, the perks you can look forward to are as follows. For the Gunner, you can find Thermal Venting which will make your overclock further increase your own fire rate by 25%, which is seriously worth slotting into a build if you're going for DPS. For the Demolisher, you can find Rampage, which makes it so every time that you kill an enemy, you gain a stack of Rampage. At 25 stacks, your fire rate, your reload speed, and movement speed are greatly increased at the cost of some of your stability for 8 seconds. Now this honestly makes it feel like someone popped a mini overclock every 25 kills. It's seriously amazing. For the Technician, as I mentioned, you can find Creative Pain Point Solutions. Now this will make it so you and your turret deal 10% more damage to slowed enemies. I don't think I need to explain how good that is on a Technician, especially with a Flame Turret. Now the Doc gets Neurotoxin Specialist, which makes it so dealing damage to an enemy weakens them, causing them to deal 20% less damage for 5 seconds. 
Once again, this is a seriously good perk for a support player looking to keep their damage dealers in the fight or keep yourself alive just a little bit longer to get off that revive or heal. Last up, we have the recon perk, Red is Dead. Now this one is incredible with a pups build. You and your teammates deal an additional 10% damage to reveal targets. That means weapons, abilities, and even melee. Just a 10% flat damage buff. Absolute lights out perk. Now, you might also come across Aftershock at some point and wonder, where the heck did this thing go? Turns out, it's actually for the upcoming Phalanx class on September 8th, and it will make it so Shock Pulse leaves behind an electric field for 10 seconds, slowing any enemies that come in contact with it. Now, I can't wait to see how good this actually is because you better believe we'll be doing a build guide for the Phalanx as soon as we get our hands on it. So there you have it, friends. That's all the secret weapons and perks that you can find while tackling the harder difficulties in the game, which should give you all a little something else to chip away at as we inch closer to new free content on September 8th. Yeah, if you have any questions about the game, you know what to do. Leave us a comment in the section below. We do our best to answer each and every question we see, and we'd be happy to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, we'd love some support. We're chasing our year-end goal of 150,000 subscribers, so if you love video games and you want more guides, reviews, and more fresh content in your feeds almost every day, please consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It's still the single best way to help channels like ours reach new audiences. We also invite you to join us on Discord. We've got a great community of around 7,000 members, with a special LFG section dedicated to Aliens Fireteam Elite. So check out the link in the description below to join today. Finally, if you like everything we stand for here at Legacy Gaming and you want to support us just a little more, you can now do so by becoming a member. For just a few bucks, you're helping evolve the channel and take our community to the next level. Click the join button below to learn more. My name is Livid and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching and play on.